All right. Hello, my name is EJ Daigle, uh, Dean of Robotics and Manufacturing at Dunwoody College of Technology. Um, this lesson will be on uh, Cognex Machine Vision again, uh, using the Insight software uh, to perform an inspection. Um, if you have not watched my previous videos on machine vision, I would point you to YouTube. I go to youtube.com slash Dunwoody Robotics, or you can just go to YouTube and search for machine vision uh, 101 or Dunwoody machine vision or uh, PLC 101 uh, Dunwoody. I've got a ton of videos out there that you guys can take a look at. Uh, but I'm going to jump right into the Cognix software today. And the part we're going to look for, look to, and, and for those of you that are in my class right now, um, if you go to the Canvas uh, course page, uh, you'll find some sample photos that utilize uh, a, uh, a serial type connector. Uh, so some of the nine pin connectors you might see for an RS-232 port or your serial port on your computer. Um, this, this is the image we're going to use today. So uh, I got to go ahead and grab that image. The previous model I did was on a fuse, so I got to get that set up. Uh, again, if you're watching for the first time, this is the application steps that we're going to use for working with the Insight software. Get connected. For getting connected, we're not going to connect to anything today. We're going to utilize the emulator. So I don't have a camera hooked up. I'm not in the lab. Uh, therefore, we will be running off of a local emulator. And if you haven't watched the first video, I do show you how to set up the emulator, download the software all for free. Um, and then uh, I will have some more videos that actually show us running the the uh, 7010 camera hooked up to an RS Logix uh, 5000 PLC. Uh, but for today, we're connected to the emulator. Then I'll go to set up images. Uh, if, if we're using the image emulator, we're not going to get them from a camera. We're going to load the images from our PC. So I'll click on that button. And then I'm going to go find the folder. And again, the Canvas page, for those of you in my class, you're going to be looking for the photos that say connector photos. That's the ones I want you to get. And hit OK. Make sure they, they come in off the Canvas page in a zip file. Make sure that you grab those photos um, and place them in an unzipped file. Do not leave them in a zip file. And don't put all your images in one folder. Uh, I had somebody in class that was, you know, inspecting connectors. And, and then all of a sudden, uh, fuses showed up in the same inspection. Well, that's not going to be very helpful. And nor is that going to happen in, uh, in the real world. You're probably not going to be working at a bakery you know, inspecting croissants coming down a conveyor belt, and then all of a sudden an automotive part shows up. You know, that's not likely to happen, right? So um, we're, for the emulator's purpose, we want to keep the, the photos limited to the current inspection that we're setting up. All right, so this is our nine pin serial port or our nine pin connector, we'll call it. I can scroll through here. And as you scroll through these images, uh, there's a total of seven images. Any human can tell that some of these images have something wrong. This uh, particular connector looks great. This connector, there's something wrong. Uh, good, 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 bad. Mm, potentially bad, <laughs> right? So where do we call bad? Well, uh, if a pin gets bent, um, that's going to cause problems for our consumer or whoever, who's ever using this part. So if I'm actually making these parts, I want to make sure that the pins are nice and straight. And that first image is going to be my model that I go off of for this. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do um, after I've got my images is I want to locate the part. Again, locating the part is essentially like creating a fixture or a datum upon which that part is going to sit to where your inspections are going to be applied, right? Um, so I need to tell it where the top of the part is. And then from that position, that's where I'm going to create my inspections. Uh, so we're going to use the pattern tool to do our location. And the search region is the outer box. I'm going to have that essentially be the whole image. Okay. And then the inner box is the model region. And for this one, I think I'm going to go kind of up at the top here and just kind of go most of the way across. I don't want to go all the way across and leave a little bit of room. But what I'm doing is I'm giving it a feature with a rounded edge here, a long straight and a rounded edge here that it should be able to find that on every part. And if I hit OK, it will create the little origin. You'll see the little XY coordinate there. I'll zoom in on that so you guys can see that. Uh, you can see the little green arrows there determining where my origin is. It's the centroid of the pattern that we just created. I'll zoom back out. And now I want to scroll through these images and make sure that that little green arrow kind of moves around with the part. 
So the part angles a little bit, it angles a little bit. If it moves up or down or left or right, that little centroid piece, that little origin or that datum stays with the part right on top of that three. Looks like it moved a little bit on, uh, maybe a little bit on one, but not nothing too tremendously horrible. It knows generally where the top center of that part is on every single one of them. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna determine, or we're gonna try to figure out how we can determine how one of these pins is bent. Uh, could we use a pattern tool, potentially? Um, could, we, uh, could we inspect each individual pin? Well, yeah, we, I mean, that's possible. I'm gonna go to the inspect tool, and, and one of the things I notice as I scroll through these images is if I look at a bent pin, I see a lot more dark pixels than if I'm looking at a pin that's vertical. A pin that's vertical is nice and round, and the pixels are confined to this circle. This shape is a circle. As soon as, even me as a human, when I look at this and determine what's a bent pin and what's not, a non-bent pin is circular in nature. It appears to me that pins two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, and eight are all good in this picture. Somebody could question whether three maybe is a little bit bent, but it looks pretty sharp. Uh, pin one is, there's no doubt, it's bent down a ton, and pin nine is bent down a ton. The same thing could be said if I go a little bit further forward and I see pins four and five, or four and nine rather, are bent pretty significantly. Again, three looks like it might have a little bit of a bend to it. I may want to reject it, um, but for sure four and five are, are really, really bent. So what I think I can do is I can probably look for a number of, of images uh, of you know the area of a number of images uh, for these particular dark areas within here. Um, so is it a, you know, is it a, is it a counting tool? Is it a measurement tool? Um, you know, as I look through these tools, if I just want to count blobs, that's going to work great. Um, but I'm still going to have a blob, even if the blob is bigger than I expect. However, I do like this other tool that I just saw, this blob area. If I just want to count the blob area of one blob, this looks like it would work pretty good. But this blob area one through 10 measures the area of up to 10 groups of dark or light colored connected pixels called blobs. Reports the area in pixels unless the image was calibrated and set up image and a pass if the result reported area is within the specified limits, a fail if outside the limits. So what it's saying is as I scroll through these, this would be a blob and it would give me the area of it. Um, this would be a blob and it would give me the area of it. But it's pretty obvious this area would be smaller than this area if I was counting dark pixels. So I, I think this might be the way to go. I only have nine blobs I gotta worry about. This does blob areas one through 10. I'm gonna go ahead and grab it. Now, when I do that, it says, hey, go ahead and uh, uh, tell me, you know, where are these blobs, where I can expect to find them, is essentially what it's saying. So I'm gonna draw a box that kind of starts near pin one there and goes all the way down around pin nine. And I wanna keep it outside or inside rather of all the other dark areas because I only want to look for these dark pixels here and I'll hit OK and now I see one blob uh, but I only see one blob and it's at 1207 pixels uh, but it's possible that you know I'm only looking if I go into the settings tab here it looks like I'm only looking to find one blob what if I change this from one blob up to nine blobs now all of a sudden it's finding one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine blobs. Now it did turn red. The reason why it turned red is because there's probably an area in here somewhere where there's a range set that if you get more than six blobs or more than seven blobs, I'm gonna turn red. Uh, I would imagine that might be in range limits. Uh, unsure here where that might be here. Uh, we'll figure that out here in a second. Um, but, I am definitely finding nine blobs here. So this, this is looking pretty darn good. I, I, think, I think this is gonna work for me. Uh, if I scroll through the images, I can see that as a pin gets bent, notice what happens to that blobs area. It gets, it gets larger, right? It gets, it gets much bigger. Um, I also noticed here, um, one of these bent pins is actually outside of my area. So I wanna maybe pull him back in. Ooh, looks like he's gonna be a troublemaker. Well, it's okay because even if I don't find him, he's going to fail anyways. So part of the reason I'm not finding him is because he's so bent. Um, let's go ahead and look at the next one here. That one looks good. That one looks good. Good. That one, 
Again, it's finding it, but it's bent. It's definitely got a bigger area. And as I look at this, one of the things I'll notice here, as you scroll through these, what you're seeing, this is kind of interesting, is the, the, the result is the largest blob, 2,500 pixels. I believe we're looking at this blob right here versus when you're looking at this one, this 1207, um, unsure which blob he is for sure, but he's one of them. Um, and when I'm looking at a really good set, you can see it's all the way down at 1168 pixels. So what I might want to do is go ahead and adjust these range limits real quick. And let's take this down to, let's say 900. I know that 1100 is good and maybe as high as 1300. I know that 1300 would be bad. Now I can see everything's green. And let's scroll through these real quick. Green, green, red. What just happened was I've got these limits on the 1300 pixels and I've got one that's at 2500 and it's failing. If I go further, uh, da, 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 this one is also failing. This one I'm not sure why this one's failing, but we'll find out. 1189 is good. This one's failing. Let's see. All right, so one of the things I'm looking at here uh, real quick is that, um, let's just start from the beginning here. What we're looking at is the, the blob area, the 1189 right now. One of the things I'd, I'd love for you to take a look at is if you pull up this table, um, that 1189 that you're seeing is actually the largest blob area. So, so index zero, if you scroll, zoom in on this thing, you'll see that pin zero it says has the largest area at 1189. And what it's doing is it's taking its X and its Y and it's uh, just giving me an area calculation of 1189. Um, so it's giving the largest area. Where that threw me a look for a little bit of a curveball here is as I scroll through these, I do know that if it goes over 1300, I want it to fail, right? So that one's good. That one's obviously bad because I've got one here that's out of range at 2138. Um, so obviously this one should fail and we got one that's not even detecting because it's so bent over it's it's hitting the boundary here I'm not too concerned as long as we identify that there's something wrong um, This one is good because you know our blob area is 1168 that my largest blob area um, This one's also good at 1189 1168 um, 2549 I've got a number that are out of range there. So that's good um, this one here threw me for a little bit of a curveball because it's it's failing. Um, now, mind you, the largest blob area on this one was was 1207, um, and they're calling that index zero. And it's not always the uh, da, 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 this one is 1207. You'll notice pin eight actually because of the lighting and such uh, being so reflective here and being kind of white, um, it didn't really appear to be a bent pin here, right? So that's not the reason why this one's failing. It's a little bit strange. If you go into that table though, you can actually research as to where the out of area occurred. The out of area actually can, occurred on, on index eight, which was only have an area of 875. If I zoom in on index eight, what I'll find out is index eight is actually very, very small. So it is the bent pin that failed. Um, and this one isn't as bent as some of them were, right? We might call this one good. I don't know, call this one bad. I mean, I'm zoomed in quite a bit. If I'm looking at the end of my cable, is that going to seat and bend back? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I can let it fail, but I also could look at this and say, hey, this is out of range at 875. You know, do you want to make this 850? And now, you know, this one's good as well. So it's really going to be up to you to determine, you know, what is good and what is bad. Um, and then at this point, you know, I could just, you know, have just an inspection, red or green, you know, and that could go to my PLC as a pass or fail and reject it off the line. Or another option I could have at this point would be to display a message. Um, and maybe I'm not concerned. I'm not going to do a bunch of stuff and say, okay, it's not, you know, I just want to know when it fails. So I'm going to do a plot tool and I'm going to go to a string and maybe everything will be good unless something fails and maybe i'll put it right up on the top up here maybe on the bottom is kind of a nice area here so i'll bring my x over like 300 uh, which puts me close to the middle maybe 275 is a little bit better then i'll bring it all the way down to the bottom on the y which will be like 500 
that's too far apparently, right? Uh, how about 350? That's a little bit higher than I want to be. Let's do 380. Uh, that looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit lower at 400. I like that. Uh, bring X over just a hair too. Bring that over to 225. I like it. So this is where I'm going to display my string data. And all I really want to do is a pass or fail uh, d dependent on the, uh, the blob area uh, step passing or failing. So I'm going to have a, uh, I'll go into the logic tools here for my string. I'll go under if, and I'll say uh, if, uh, oh, I guess it's blob area. Do I have a step status? Uh, da, 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 da. Hmm. What can we do here? Let's see. I mean, I could just do the area, I guess, itself. Is there a score? There's a results. Uh, there's an area. Blob area. I could put that in, I guess. That would be a... That'd be a could say if blob area is greater than, I don't remember what the number was, I think it was like 1300, then, uh, then I won't do anything. I'll call that, or if it's 1300, then I'll do a fail. And maybe I'll do a comma with nothing in the next one here, just so that I can get a fail message when I need to. And I don't have a fail here. I do have a fail there, so I can see it up here in the results to see if my thing is working here. So when it turns red, I expect that fail to show up. And I, uh, I can see the fail is actually showing up, albeit it's, uh, it's very small position down here. So I'm gonna go into my settings for this and change this to a really large size. I'm gonna make it 72. Um, and I'll bring my Y up just a hair. So I'll bring my Y up to 375. And we'll go to 350. There we go. And I'll make my default color. I'll change it from the uh, green that I have here to a red. I will make it bold. And now anytime I have one that fails, I am going to get the big red fail is what I'm going to do. And that should be enough for someone to identify it. Again, this point in the inspection, I'd probably be more likely to go my inputs and outputs on my camera and actually send a message over to the PLC telling it to, hey, reject this one off the line um, we need to uh, we need to uh, or in some cases just stop the line you know maybe if I have three fails in a row maybe I want to stop the line completely rather than just rejecting them because it might need you know it's one thing to make one bad part out of a hundred um, but it does you no good if your system makes you know 99 bad parts in a row but it identifies them all as bad parts um, you, at that point you know you really need to stop the system and uh, and tell it what's going on. I have a friend that works at a brewery, and uh, and they sometimes get what's called low fill, and so they they're it's a bottling line, and you know if the bottling line has you know at the beginning of the shift one or two low fills, no big deal, right? Um, but if all of a sudden you have you know thirty or forty low fills in a row, you can't sell that product, and so even it or even if it's not in a row, if it's thirty or forty out of every five hundred bottles. You know that's going to be stuff that's wasted. Um, so it's it's something you want to you want to keep track of. You know what percentage am I going to allow to fail? And if this percentage is hit, you know if out of every hundred, if more than two percent fail, then I want to send a message. I want to send an email. I want to stop the line. I want to do this. I want to do that. Whatever it might be. Uh, but you also don't want to stop the line prematurely. You know if you're making a very inexpensive part, you know and one part out of every thousand fails, but you know each part only costs you know a tenth of a penny to make, you might be fine with that as long as you can identify that which ones are bad and which ones are good and you're not potentially selling any bad parts, you might be just fine with, with doing that. So, but anyways, um, hopefully with that, you know, I'll go to run job here real quick and play it and we should be able to watch this thing be green, 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 and it will fail. And again, you could question on some of these, you know, is it how little is the bend, how big is the bend? Um, but what we are seeing is we are seeing that they are indeed failing in many occurrences. So uh, that concludes uh, this particular vision lesson on blob area um, using these connectors. Thank you.